I uh, just want to talk about the pay gap between men and women after divorce. Um, it's an interesting topic brought up today in the comments section and I, I want to put my, I'd say, can I say reality? I'll, I'll put my viewpoint on this. This, this, is, this is my personal viewpoint because then if anybody wants to back out with the figures and that, they can go for it. Um, the first thing I want to say is that the, the most divorces, about half at least, um, end up in the first 10 years. The, the, the separation divorce happens in, in the first 10 years. As such, mo when do most people marry? When they're younger and vulnerable to make mistakes. So the, the point being is if they're marrying in that age group somewhere between 20 and 30, you haven't reached your financial um, ability until you're probably in your, probably about 38. So, so the, the point being is, up to that point, you're often still the, the person that's learning, whether you're in college, university, um, carrying out a process of manual labor, um, but it's not really increasing, it's normally stagnant for a while because you're still in that evolution. For example, the companies I work for, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a supervisor under 27. Um, so the point being is if you're married at 20, in the first seven years, your pay rise is probably a maximum of 3%. And you get these pay rises periodically anyway. Um, so the point being is, your, your wages would increase anyway. And the, the reason this is brought up, because people are um, saying, well, it's, it's a myth that men come out worse off. Wrong. Because during this time period is when you have your most disposable income. Um, this is when you get your disposable income and have more to spend on things before you get roped into buying a house or whatever. Or you put the deposit together after you're 17 something to a year about 24, 25, and then begin going down the path of getting the deposit together, getting a mortgage. And then obviously when you're separating, you're, you're probably already paid the first five years of your mortgage off or whatever. Um, but the point being is in that initial stage, you have more disposable income until you have the kids. And then it changes, it's a natural progression path. Now, when people are saying that uh, men aren't as bad off as they make out because their salary increases periodically anyway or they financially they're better off percentage wise reality is I can guarantee the statistics do not involve the word benefit now from a separation divorce point of view you're gonna find a lot of the women do not work again and the the word poverty is used, there's no such thing as poverty in the UK, unless it's, it's what I would class as willful neglect. Um, Self-inflicted in most cases because it's people on methadone and things like that. Um, you can work your way out of it in the UK. You can re-educate yourself. You can spend two years studying or whatever, learning something new. You lock yourself away, you get yourself a computer, get yourself on YouTube, get yourself whatever. You can learn something, you can get yourself out of it, but the benefit system can maintain you. And that's the point, it's not poverty. Um, but what people forget is when the women side um, occurs, often they end up with the children. So the first thing is they've got alimony. Second thing is probably the child benefit as well, housing benefit, uh, council tax benefit, reduced rates on the water bills, electrics and other things, um, subsidized rent, and all these other bits and pieces. Now, that's not salary based, you see. That won't be in these figures. And if they have had children, and the woman then decides to go about part-time, which is often the case, and the part-time thing is another benefit uh, connection relating to the 16 hours. Um, there has been a saying for a long time in the UK, better off on benefits. Now, from a male point of view, getting into that environment would be very difficult anyway, because, I mean, it's like myself, I've, I've spoken to, um, 
housing offices and stuff before because I've worked for housing associations. And I said, well, how could I get a house? And they said, well, you can't because you owe too much. But on top of that, there's a whole uh, ream of point systems that are tied into this. And it's why, like my, um, my sister's daughter, she recognized most of her classmates have all popped out kids and all got houses. And they've all got the houses through the benefits system. Um, the men, on the other hand, have got nothing because they're all separated because obviously they pop these kids out when they're 17, 18, they don't even mature to full adulthood. They pop the kids out, down the housing office, into emergency housing. Emergency housing within six months gives them a one bedroom flat, pop another kid out, out to a two bedroom, pop another kid out and into a three bedroom house. That's how it works. And they do it. It is an enterprise. You can sit and watch them talking about it. Um, my sister was whining about it because uh, I mentioned the what what was called the Singles Mothers Club, which was these groupings of young mothers, like the from sixteen to twenty one, that hang around in McDonald's during the afternoons because they let the kids run riot in there while they sit and chat and eat eat burgers. Um, my sister was giving me some of that on there. I'm like, you stupid woman. You know, at the end of the day, I'm talking about, firstly, it's what your, what your daughter said, because she worked at McDonald's as her first job after school. But also, she assumed, this is why feminism irritates me a bit. The, the argument being is that we're um, accusing all women as being the same. The fact is, I know my sister put herself through college after she'd had a kid, and it was probably about three years later or whatever. I wasn't even talking about her because um, she did work but there's a lot of stuff I'm not going to get onto why she's not the perfect mother in the first place but the point being is there's this automatic defense thing men v women they seem to come from the female side because I've got to admit guys don't generally do it and the point is these women are just breeding sitting in McDonald's and that's it. That's their life. They probably won't do anything until they're probably about 40s and realize they've missed life by sitting, thinking a council house was the be all and end all. Um, but at the same time, it goes to a documentary I was watching about East London relating to 18 to 21 year olds and the fact that they're not interested in relationships. The men are not interested. They, they've seen it all because these, this generation of the single mother sitting there smoking and whatever, that little snotty nose kid is those 18, 19 year old kids now that seen that their father just got fed up with a lack of access and everything and they lost their father figure and they do not want to be that father figure. They do not want to be the, the kid to pop their girlfriend to pop a kid out eventually either be held over them or um, having to pay until the kid's 18 at the same time not having any access or dealing with the mood swings of the ex. All that is missing from that article and at the same time people forget a lot of women choose to do their stuff. That's the fundamental thing. A lot of guys most of the guys, well, sorry, most of the guys I know go into a relationship for a long-term relationship. I would say there's probably less than 10 guys I know that have cheated. There's less than 10 guys I know that um, fundamentally would not be interested in marriage. But do you know what? The ones that cheated never married anyway. They were cheating on girlfriends and still doing it um, but at the same time they don't have an exclusive relationship with one person anyway but with the women a lot of these women are popping the kids out for the free housing and not having to work and the US side may, may be different but I'm sure some guys are going to fill that in for me but in the UK you have one of these kids you're responsible for it as, an, as a male till it's 18, regardless if you're married or not. 
The CSA, Child Support Agency, or whatever it's called today, will directly go after your salary straight from your employer. Um, so you have no say in this. And if you lost your job, until that's reassessed in the court system, the expectation is, or the, sorry, your realization is that you will still have to pay the same as you would even if you've been employed for, for, unemployed for three months until the legal system recognizes you have not worked. Um, so the point being is, I can't see the poor woman coming out on the, with less than she started with. A lot of the time, they come out with way more than they started with, and at the same time, they often don't have the career prospects in the first place. The guy is fundamentally even if people don't like it or not, it's still the breadwinner. For most houses, it's still the breadwinner. Um, and as such, that is maintained. A single woman that is career-driven is unlikely to have had kids anyway. And if they have married, it's normally to somebody that is like-minded and similar. And they, they drift apart, and that's why I've mentioned that before, they, when uh, it's been made out that there's always a victim. A lot of time there is no victim, because it's simply this, it's a failure. Things do go wrong in life. Life is not perfect. But on top of that, on top of that, I would actually say that everything I've just said reinforces why MGTOW exists. And... If women think that they're downtrodden and losing out on uh, marrying somebody, do us a favor, don't marry men. And from MGTOW, they'll quite happily support you in not marrying you either. Everyone's happy. Thanks for watching.